The Monero Topia Price Report segment is sponsored by Local Monero. Avoid using KYC exchanges. Buy and sell Monero directly for fiat peer to peer. So um, this is the Monero US dollar chart on Kraken, and this is the hour chart. So we can get kind of a, a breakdown of um, you know what prices looked like since the announce the delisting de was announced. Um, so February sixth, here we go. Is apparently so it was February sixth they announced it. We had the big crash, and then things kind of normalized. There was another big crash again. Th this is artificial down here. Like this crash right there was just scare tactics. Um, especially considering that Binance shut down withdrawals 24 hours earlier than they were supposed to. Um, another thing that's special is that Binance completely disappeared unpersoned Monero from their system. Usually when, it, when an exchange removes a coin, they, they still make their data available for that coin up until the point that it was trading. At least they can, they, they'll do that for some period of time afterwards. Binance this morning, like that, I, so I posted a tweet, you know, that there was just nothing there. In fact, I'll just show you guys why not. Um, Binance XMR. I don't even know. Like you can see, it's not even here in, in trading view. Invalid symbol. Wait, like, seriously? They just like removed it straight up. Yeah, like like normally you'll see all of the data until the moment that they remove the coin from their exchange. And I've seen this with other coins. And then you'll just have no data afterwards. But Binance like literally just completely removed fucking everything. We can't look That's at their crazy. volume, their price, nothing. Yeah, fucking. Maybe they're trying to like hide stuff. No doubt, like like there's absolutely no doubt that um, that they just don't want that information out there. They know it's incriminating. Like I was actually thinking about this today. I, I'm not a litigious person, so I pr probably would never do this, and probably most of Monero Monero people wouldn't do it either. But there is a legitimate case to go sue Binance for their criminal conduct and their fraud that they've conducted against Monero in suppressing the price and lying about their reserves. We have so much evidence that would point to that um, that there there probably really could be a case there. It's been very difficult to sue them. Um, you know, it just in general, it's been hard to like pin them down to a jurisdiction. Um, I doubt anything would come of it. It probably would just be completely <laughs> useless. Like, why waste your time doing that? But, you know, from like a legal perspective, there, there probably is um, some case to be made there. Anyways, yeah, they removed everything today. So Let, let's do it. Let's do a Kuno fundraiser to uh, start a class action suit. A I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. If I don't, I don't know if we would get yeah for uh you know getting a an, an attorney on board yeah um so we need to like bring the evidence that we could that we could bring um and then get uh obviously get a lawyer to put that case together and then hopefully it would be enough i mean if you if that route if you were going to go that route and i really don't think it's necessarily the best route to go but you know if there's um, yeah you would you, you would hopefully convince a judge to, to order discovery on binance for their books Right. Yeah, I don't, I don't think no. the Monero community has has the will there, right, for for people <laughs> no. to uh, get behind that movement. No, I don't. Interesting Definitely. though, I, I've thought about it myself too. I do, I do think right there's there's likely legal action that can be taken. It seems yeah. like pretty uh, blatant fraud. There's so much like they've done so much fraud. Like Monero's not the only one. Like, um, so for example, they back in 2021. They liquidated a whole bunch of people in an Ethereum perpetual contract that were nowhere near their liquidation point, not even close. They never made people whole. They gave them like, what I read is they gave them like a hundred dollar voucher or some, some bullshit, but they never actually made those people whole or reverse those positions or paid them out or anything. Um, there was a, a token called LTC down and it's a short token. You buy the token and if Litecoin goes down, then your token should go up, right? It's, it's effectively like an inverse position. So anyways, that token crashed to like almost nothing as LTC crashed. It was supposed to go up and it went to almost nothing and they never made those people whole. They probably have been fractionally reserving Bcash for all I know. Uh, I, I don't, I haven't looked at any of that. It would be in their MO potentially to do that. Uh, and maybe even Doge. It's possible that they had like done some weird shitty shit with Doge back in 2021. But yeah, I mean, they're, the, the level of their fraud is just insane. And it, what's crazy is that the people that they defrauded are never going to get money back like all of those people would have some kind of claim, but the government sued them and, uh, you know, CZ doesn't have to do any prison time. He just has to be like, oh, I committed a crime, but and paid $4 billion, but you know, no jail time. So it's like, there's just like, it's just not worth it. There's no reason to go try and bring a case there. Binance is evil and fraud scummy, and they're just going to duck and dodge out of everything. And they've probably got the tacit support. They were probably 
all along some kind of like deep state fucking game, especially since um, what's his name? See, since CZ, his former boss was was former Mayor Bloomberg. Like he has a picture with him. He's like, I enjoyed my time working with you, Mayor Bloomberg. It was, you know, great, whatever. Oh, blah, really? Blah. Oh, yeah. wow, that's Bloomberg. funny. Okay. Huh. Yeah. Wow. I have not been following the CZ stuff closely. I mean, you would, I guess you would think I would considering everything with Binance and Monero, but I kind of kind of ignored all that. Um, where, where's the best place? Like, who's done some good uh, good interviews or or things with regards to that to to learn more about it? Damn, I it's, I wouldn't be able to give you a point towards that, a single has source. Has anybody like? Yeah, I'd love to. Uh, we got to get them on. This is just like the accumulation now, of stuff that I remember from, from over the years, you know, just reading about what's happened. and Yeah, and no, no, no. It's it's pretty wild, the shit he's gotten away with. Deep deep state, yeah. huh? You think so? He think you think that he, they're tied in? This, and and going after Monero was, was, uh, has been part of the plan, like using this as a tool to to dampen out Monero? I, I really, you know, I'm, I'm obviously speculating here, but... That that would definitely line up. That would be completely unsurprising. I think it's more likely than not that he is tied into that cabal somehow. Uh, very similar to how Tether seems to just operate largely with impunity and getting the occasional slap on the wrist. Um, Binance mm -hmm. was a major conduit of new Tethers. And it's interesting that even though, for example, it, from from what I read, the was it the, I think it was the DOJ said, maybe, maybe it was the SEC, one of those two, they said a big part of the reason that FTX collapsed was because of CZ's actions, because of Binance's actions uh, and, and what they did to like sort of make that happen. Yet Sam Bakeman seems like he's going to be going to jail for a while and CZ is just going to completely get off scot-free. CZ posted himself like his picture with Bloomberg and being like, oh, I really enjoyed my time working for you, yada, yada. He posted that himself on his own Twitter wall. So, um, I mean, just kind of like the balance of probabilities to me, it seems very likely. Like, how does he just get away with doing all this shit? And it just, it seems too convenient. And I know it's like, I know it's kind of hard to be like always speculating about the conspiracy, but given the world that we live in at this point, it's like, you kind of have to go directly towards that and say, okay, what's, what's probably happening behind the scenes. Let's imagine some stuff. Let's be careful about the kinds of evidence that we have, but you know, let's, you know, cause you can go too far to the one side and be like, oh my God, look, he touched the wall <laughs> and he has a yarmulke on. He's obviously part of the, you know, the evil Zionist club or whatever, like, like it's easy to, to take that too far and misunderstand the types of evidence that you have for believing different things, but you definitely should be, I think, like if you're really trying to understand the world, you, you have to speculate. You have to think about um, like, okay, what kinds of things could be going on here? What kind of connections are made? What What's the strength of that evidence? What type of evidence is it, et cetera? So I tend to think CZ probably has been part of that cabal for a long time. Do you think, Body, is there a way to uh, see those Binance charts again? Like are, are there sites that archive that? That kind of stuff. There might be. I haven't tried to track them down. I'm I'm stupid. I should have known they were going to do this, and I should have downloaded all of their data because I can, I can just go here and and click and um, I always forget where it is because I haven't done it in a while. But you can just download the entire like this entire chart, the entire history. You can download their volume and everything, and uh, that that's really on me, guys. <laughs> to to have lost that is is, is really on me here. Hmm. I feel like there's some site that would have the information still. I don't know. I bet you. I bet you someone still got it. I'm not sure how much we really need it, to be honest. Like, they have the longest running XMR USD pair, but Kraken has the long. Sorry, they have the longest running XMR Bitcoin pair. But all you like, just you can go to Kraken and divide XMR USD, and they have the longest XMR USD chart, and divide that by Bitcoin, and get the ratio. Uh, of a longer history. I think that's also why a lot of maximalists constantly post the wrong chart because they just go to, you know, Binance and they, they just type in XMR or BTC. Yep. <laughs> and they're like, haha, look at that. Look at your shit coin. It's like, bro, that chart goes back to like 2018, 20, 2017, whatever. It, it doesn't go all the way back for the full history of the chart. And it's probably just because they're plebs that don't know any better. <laughs> so if I was going to try and assign a non nefarious reason for their. Am I allowed to say retardation on YouTube? I hope that doesn't cause a strike here. <laughs> I think it's still loud, maybe. <laughs> I think I think so. Wow, we got Wait. over we got seventy seven live viewers right now. Nice. Tons of tons of comments coming in. We're trying to get that um, super chat feature up. Maybe by next weekend, actually, like, we'll have something working, which should be cool. A Monero based super chat feature for the show. I'm um, seeing a question, Baldy. What percentage of spot volume was on Binance? 
Oh, that's a good question. I never like ran those charts. The thing is, I, I, was, I have never been convinced that volume is reliable. I have never been convinced that anyone is reporting their volume accurately. Um, so I kind of just like neglected to look at volume for quite a long time. And um, somewhere um, yesterday, I was like, you know what? I'm curious what the volume looks like uh, at the moment in terms of the other exchanges. Like what, at least what are they reporting, right? Um, if I'm not mistaken, Binance was supposedly doing 50 to 70,000 XMR worth of volume. But those are like old numbers. That was back 2021, I think. Um, I don't know what their percentage of spot was, and we never can know because we know that they fake their volumes. Like, there's no question about this. Um, there have been many studies done really since 2018 that just like, that just demonstrate that. So for example, like there's statistical metrics you can use that, and they do this for um, like taxes and stuff too. If you file your taxes and you're making a bunch of shit up, you're going to have um, weird aberrations in your, like the number of leading zeros. Um, and then like the distribution of like the digits of your different numbers should follow like a, a pretty set distribution. Um, so there's, they do that. They've done all kinds of other things, other little tests to basically show that, that pretty much all these shitcoin exchanges, um, at least the ones that are not regulated, they're all faking their volumes. So I just never put much stock into those, into those volumes. Um, nevertheless, you know, it's an interesting data point to look at. So, um, I pulled up, I put up, pulled up all the charts that we have. So it looks like Qcoin is taking over allegedly all the volume they're reporting um almost a hundred thousand an average for the past week or so um let's see how long that is actually uh that would be two weeks for the past two weeks they've been reporting somewhere between 80 to 110,000 monero worth of volume every single day and that's substantial hmm. uh, and then you'll notice obviously that ticked up um on on february 6th when when the delisting was announced um, the other exchanges here, so this is Poloniex, um, this is Poloniex XMR USD, XMR USDT, and XMR USDC. You'll notice like there's almost no volume happening for, for USDC. Um, quite a lot of tether volume happening though. It's almost um, right now uh, averaging around 55,000 um, and then peaking somewhere around like 75,000 Monero per day on Poloniex. I don't, again, I don't think I believe that. Like I just don't believe those numbers. Um, which exchange was this one? Hmm. Sometimes it shows you the exchange and sometimes it doesn't. Where is, what am I looking for here? There, there's, oh, about this indicator, finally. No. Oh, I know why it's not showing. It's because I have it maximized. There we go. Okay, MEXC. I don't know. So MEXC is like the latest shitcoin exchange. Supposedly, um, people are getting, occasionally getting their funds frozen. So just, just know, like, when you don't KYC <laughs> and there's no regulations, like, that you've got no recourse, right? So just know that if you're trading on these shitcoin exchanges, you might lose money. They might freeze your shit. Um, and what they do, like a common tactic that Binance did back in the day, they would demand KYC information and they say, oh, well, it's not good enough. Uh, you need to send us another one, send us another one. And it's just like delay tactics and, and they'll just continually say, oh, we don't, we don't think you're telling the truth. And, and it doesn't matter how many selfies you send them, they won't unfreeze your funds um, until they get like a demand letter from a lawyer. So um, just know that like, all of the tactics that Binance pioneered, all of this shady fraud, fraudulent stuff, it's very likely they're just going to rotate a lot of this into these other exchanges. It looks like Qcoin is the premier one, um, but Mexi also seems to me to um, just kind of like, it's kind of like eyebrow, eyebrow raising stuff. There's not like any hard evidence to be like, these guys are fraudulent, right? I'm not saying that. Um, maybe there's hard evidence. I just have, I haven't looked for it. But anyways, the point is that Mexi is like a new exchange here. They're doing allegedly about 30,000 Monero worth of volume um, versus the USDT pair. So um, yeah, Qcoin and Mexi seem to be the new ones that um, that volume has allegedly rotated to. Again, it's somewhat questionable. Do we believe their volume numbers? They're probably inflated. Um, it's hard to say, but but yeah, those are probably. So this is also another point that's that's probably important to bring out here. Um, for a while, I was like, okay, you know, if Monero can just get delisted from Binance, this should help our price situation. Um, my guess here is they're just going to rotate this shit. Uh, they're going to rotate it into um, into other exchanges. The good news is is that the the publicity of all this is really hopefully going to encourage a lot of people to in, to move to these more decentralized solutions uh, instead of um, places like Binance, right? Instead of just moving your funds into some other shitcoin exchange, hopefully people will now be encouraged to use decentralized solutions. At the same time, I think that there's probably also it seems likely that. At some levels, some of the shady motherfuckers in crypto need a way to move their funds. And a lot of those shady motherfuckers are connected corporately 
to like the sort of like background cabal, the the elite cabal of cryptocurrency, right? The the guys kind of like running a lot of shit. Um, the guys kind of doing a lot of shady shit. Uh, I'm talking like Bitfinex here. I'm talking, you know, obviously the Tether guys, obviously Binance, um, and and Justin Sun and, and a whole bunch of other people, right? That are sort of peripherally associated there. These guys probably do have some kind of need to move funds covertly. So probably these exchanges largely represent um Monero being moved in that cabal. They probably have exchange deals where they're like, oh, okay, we can trust you to move these funds and you know, et cetera, et cetera, where they like they sort of trust each other, thick as thieves, uh, if you will. So um that might be what these numbers represent here. I think that most people, like the average pleb, the average um, person in Monero, um, even just your casual Monero users, I think most of us are trying to migrate to solutions that are a little bit more decentralized in nature. So um, yeah, prices actually recovered um, reasonably well today from from that crash it took yesterday. I don't think it's any accident that price crashed the moment that um, that Binance shut down their withdrawals again early. Uh, I, I'm guessing that was just, again, it's, this is, I think, it's a social thing in nature. They're trying to create fear, uncertainty, and doubt, right? They just want to flood the shit out of Monero as much as they can. Um, and it's probably not the last time, right? This is probably just the first one. There's probably going to be new exchanges coming up, new problems coming up where Monero gets delisted. Um, it, you know, it could be like this whole thing where it's like this theater and they play it out. Maybe Qcoin becomes the next Binance and then Qcoin gets attacked next cycle, right? Three or four years from now. And then and they come into compliance and then delist Monero, right? Like they'll probably keep playing this same tune that they that they've done here for the past month. They'll probably they'll they'll probably repeat this. So we just have to expect that. Um, it's it's really unsurprising that 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 would happen there. Uh, really so honest, I'm think- surprised it didn't go down lower than what it did uh, yesterday. Yeah, it seems like it might crash a little bit lower. Um, this really like I don't want to call this good because <laughs> who knows like things could crash, but I. I I am curious to see what price does here now after all this dumb shit is done. Um, maybe it maybe seemed to start recovering recover. pretty quickly after uh, after yesterday, like towards towards the late evening, it started to started to cover a fair amount. Yeah, um, started from down here right around looks like 109, uh, and right now from the low we're up to we're up about 13 percent. Yeah, I had one buy. Order that was at like 110 that got executed. Like I was oh, like, nice. oh, <laughs> surprised job, me. Fucking a. Yeah, so there was probably a good opportunity to buy here. Um, in terms of like touching this line down here is kind of like a spot to look for. Uh, you know what? Let's both the Z scores. I'm willing to bet that. I'm willing to bet that there's some divergence here on the Z scores. Uh, again, Z scores being kind of like RSI. Um, yeah, eh, violent moves like this, it's kind of hard to to say for sure. Let's actually just look at RSI. I don't like it that much, but sometimes it's sometimes when there's massively violent moves, RSI now it basically looks the same. You, you could try and call this divergence um, bullish divergence where price made a lower low, but um, the uh, the RSI made a higher low. Uh, but usually you want to see three touches for that, like to confirm that. Uh, and I'm not sure that we're going to get another touch. I'm not sure that we're going to get another low like that. Like probably most of this has been milked for the uh the fud that it that it can be milked for um so yeah this is probably not a bad spot like if you were going to flip some some ethereum into into monero or some bitcoin in monero this is probably not a bad spot to um to try and do that um you know buyer beware obviously but uh and, and you know this also relates to another thing so i posted about this we talked about this last week um actually i was talking about this last week that kind of made me post this um so a lot of people, and especially, and I get this in groups a lot, um, people that are like, they like Monero, they're users of Monero, they're casual users of Monero, they're not like hardcore privacy enthusiasts or whatever. Um, you know, they just want to use the thing that'll work for them. And so I always get this question, hey man, can I just like ha- chain hop through Monero? Like I could just like chain hop and then and I'll, and I'll get my privacy, right? They're like, <laughs> no, no, probably not. Um, especially not the way you're thinking about doing it and especially not the person or the um, the swap that you're going to use, right? Like all of these instant swaps, or maybe you're on Qcoin or, or whatever. Um, these guys are probably reporting information to chain analysis. But I'm sure some of them aren't, but you just kind of have to assume that they are, right? Adversarial thinking, assume that they've got your data, you gave it to them, and they're probably going to use it because they're probably getting paid for it. So if you really, really want to chain hop, and I get it, like you need to pay someone in Cutcoin because they fucking, they're retards and they don't accept an arrow. Okay, got it. I have to do that too. Um, what you want to do is to have a pre-positioned large stash of Monero that you use all the time. You pay friends with it and 
you know, you turn it, you turn it, you do whatever, right? It's just your stack. It can be the same wallet that you have um, for everything else. Um, and again, this is like non-extraordinary threat model. If you're a darknet market vendor, you, you've got other concerns, right? <laughs> you need to stop and you need, like, if you're actually doing shit, you know, taking ransomware payments or, um, you know, whatever, like, if you have a high threat model, like this doesn't apply to you, you need to go seek better advice than this. But for the rest of like all of us, the other 99% of us, you need to have a pre-positioned stash of Monero that you would call your HODL effectively. And you use that regularly all the time. When you need to pay someone, what you're going to do is pay them immediately out of your stack for the full amount, whatever it is. Um, and you're going to swap into the coin that you need to, Good, right? Litecoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin, whatever, who cares? Um, you're going to swap into that other coin, make that payment. And you're going to do this like a few times. You're, you're not just going to like, send them the payment and then immediately top up your Monero stash for, you know, the, the 3.91 Monero you just spent, right? You're, you, you want to wait some kind of random period of time. Um, and really you want to do a few spins like that. And then when you top up your wallet, don't top it back up to the exact same level. Do it like, do it too much, right? Top it up higher or top it up a little bit less. Do it at weird staggered random intervals and for different kinds of staggered amounts. And by doing this, you're breaking the link that that can be formed by timing analysis. So associating that chain hop at some close moment in time, um, when you combine the timing analysis with the amount and with the probabilistic nature of the transaction graph, right? It's yes, it's, it's got you've got plausible deniability there, but when you associate that data, other heuristics such as timing and amounts, and, and remember when you're chain hopping, you don't have hidden amounts anymore, right? You the people watching know how much amounts was moved in or out of Monero. Um, so you have to break up those heuristics in a way that make them unable to be correlated. And by doing this, that's how you can get your privacy, or at least significantly better privacy. You can break those heuristics, and that's how you would chain hop through Monero to get your privacy. You want to have a big stash of Monero that you use regularly, make the payment first, and only after the fact, at some irregular interval for an irregular amount, only then top up your Monero stash. Um, don't just wait you know, 10 minutes or 30 minutes or an hour, right? Um, so hopefully, like hopefully, that's really practical advice that people can use. Um, it's something I've been thinking about for a long time, um, in terms of like chain hopping and and how do you do that. And um, it's funny how sometimes you sort of like settle onto solutions accidentally after like thinking about it, and you you just kind of like do it. But I hadn't like really formed all of that together into a coherent like um, message until maybe the last uh, month. But I've been doing it for you know for quite a long time. Um, so hopefully that that helps some some people out there. Um, let's take a break here and check out the. Uh, YouTube comments in case there's anything, anything uh, uh, that I missed here on the YouTube comments. Sixty six dollars in twenty twenty four, nightmare hawk. Hey, bro, if you get sixty six dollar entry, I mean, that's that's pretty good. Um, all right, I guess I'm not seeing anything on the on the comments here. We'll go back to price. Um, da -da -da. Okay, um, let's talk about the divergence chart. Um, it seems like there are people that are interested in it. Um, oh, you know, I hadn't updated this script. I, I actually, I updated it, but I haven't, I haven't published it. Um, maybe I can just publish this right now. Oh, update existing script. Maybe I shouldn't do this live. <laughs> I got my wave magic trips, but I'm still like, I have a hard time delivering that to the world. It's special. Uh, there we go. XMR divergence and published. Okay, guys, um, that script is now published and updated. Um, so let's talk about it. This is obviously the divergences from Kraken's price to these other exchanges. They're all listed here. Binance has gone from that list now. Um, uh, there's two things. There's two ways you can look at this. The first way is just saying, okay, what is the percentage difference of price? So on the right here, you've got, um, this is in percent. So Poloniex, for example, has been going like 4% down, 5%. Uh, apparently when the delisting happened, it looks like they went about like 7% down. Um, this is, this is, uh, the, the price that they were below Kraken, 7% down, um, recently. Okay. Um, oh, actually that was, uh, no, that was back in January. So anyway, I, I don't trust, I don't trust Poloniex anyways. Um, uh, but the point is that you can either look at this as a percentage price difference to Kraken, but the reality is that not all of these exchanges do a whole lot of volume, right? So like if Poloniex, if their prices are really low compared to Kraken, but they do no volume down there. Does it really matter? Like, do we, do we really care? So what you're going to do is open up the settings and click make volume adjustment. And what that does is it multiplies by the volume so that you can get an idea of how much real volume was actually done um, at those divergences. 
So you can see when Binance delisted, we actually had a significant amount of volume that Qcoin and Mexi, at least their reported volumes that they were doing below Kraken. Now, in terms, like in an absolute term of how much lower was their price, um, you'll notice that they were between one and two and a half percent lower than Kraken. So um, that's how to use this chart. That's how to like, those are the, the options that you can use. Uh, also note that some of all, um, this only works with a volume adjustment. You, otherwise you need to take the average of the, um, of the price differences, but I just sum them together. So that sum of all is only applicable when there's a volume adjustment. So uh, yeah, if anyone out there is using that script, hopefully that's a little bit of um, a little bit of useful stuff for you. Question from someone new, what's Monero best counter to if it benefits money launders? Um, or is the sentiment that Monero is dark and still there for a market? Um, there's there's like a number of different ways of looking at this. Some of them, um, some some people will use certain arguments, other people use other ones. Um, the easiest one is to be like, what about them? Just be like, well, the, U the US dollars use more than anything else for money laundering. Like um, the the banks themselves, like the ban I think it was Wachovia. I'm pretty sure it was Wachovia. This was like a, a decade ago, but um, they had a massive fine for laundering a shitload of drug money. Um, but you know, they still exist. Um, there's, there's so many people that use the U S dollar vastly more for money laundering than, um, uh, than Monero. Monero is just a blip on that field. So, um, maybe that's not the best argument because what about is like, you know, it's like, well, it's, it's, it's not, it's not the best argument, right? You're, you're pointing fingers instead of like addressing the root cause to me, the real situation is that money laundering is not a crime. It's only a crime in the statutes and codes and sense that the government tries to imply, uh, impose their authority onto people and forcibly um, keep them suppressed under their system, which inflates their assets and then taxes them on that inflation so that when you sell an asset with capital gains, you can't even keep up with inflation. Like, let's suppose you buy a house for 100000 and then uh, because of their fucking money printing, that house becomes $200,000 uh, of value, quote unquote, in, say, uh, in, in a few years. You sell that thing. Well, that house is now two hundred thousand dollars, right? That's the market value of that house. But then you have a hundred thousand dollars of capital gains you have to pay taxes on. They're robbing you blind in that equation. So it's like, in terms of money laundering, it's it's a made up crime that the government uses um, to 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 really like suppress to uh, to oppress the people um, and and keep their entire fraudulent scam and theft going. Um, I mean, that's that's like the fundamental thing I would say there about it benefits money launderers. Yeah. Um, <laughs> The, the entire let's be let's be bank true sec oh, sorry, bank ahead, secrecy bro. act right the, the entire bank secrecy act um you know it's sorry about the background noise uh is just uh, a ploy to to control right yeah um and what they're doing with monero just exposes it more it's just, it's the same thing over again but it is it is yes, a good question, right? Because I mean, this this is the tool that they're using to to fight against Monero. This is the tactic that they're using. Uh, Monero bad. Monero used for bad things, um, and they just if they make it difficult for the average person to to see be beyond that, right, and understand abstractly why Monero isn't bad, right? And the only, yeah, <laughs> making making it, making it quite effective. Um, which is why we're a small group of people, right? Why it's not a, a larger group of people that are yet understanding of this and using Monero, because it does take some, some thought and understanding to realize. So, um, yeah, you brought up actually a, another response to that. So I kind of gave the two extreme positions there on the, the sort of what about what aboutism tactic, which is, again, is, it's not necessarily the best tactic. It can be good. It's like a good cheeky way to, to make a quick response. Then there's just like completely denying the uh, the fundamental like aspects of what the government says money laundering is. And then there's kind of like this middle ground where you say, listen, you could choose anything that you want to choose, any physical thing, any abstract asset like money or digital currency. You could choose anything you want and say that bad people use it for bad things. And therefore, we need to presume everyone is a criminal until they prove otherwise. And that's what all these money laundering laws or statutes and regulations and codes are about. They're about turning the burden of proof upside down. They presume that you've gotten that money from a bad place and you were required to tell them that you didn't get it from a bad place. You're required to submit a form and an affidavit, not an affidavit, but uh, you know, you're required to submit stuff saying, oh, I, I got this, I promise, I didn't get it from bad things. Meanwhile, the government themselves are committing crimes left and right and doing all, like using money for all sorts of horrible, immoral things. And so like really like you could say you could use it with guns, you could use it with cars and vehicles and shoes, you could use it with household cleaning products that can be used 
uh, to make all sorts of stuff that Tyler Durden told us about uh, back in the late 90s. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's it's really like from a fundamental perspective, but probably the, the middle the middle road that you could use with most normies is, is just to simply say that everything can be used for bad stuff. Um, Monero is money and money is used for bad stuff. Like money is half of every single transaction. So, um, the, so you can use shoes to run away from a crime. You can use a kitchen knife to 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 rob somebody. Um, so it's not right. It's it's not appropriate to assume that someone is a criminal and then turn the burden of proof and say, well, your usage of this thing, now you have to prove that you didn't use it badly. Um, no, no, no. You, I only have to prove that if there's reasonable suspicion that I've actually used it to, to commit a crime. Uh, and that's like, that's how law is supposed to work. So that would be like my sort of three different options there. You could go with, a, uh, as a response to that question, when people say that people use Monero for bad I'd, things. I'd expect nothing less. Did you see that congressional hearing this week? Did you see any I did of that? not. Man, I pay so uh, yeah, little I'll, attention to politics. <laughs> I'll try to bring that up during the news if I could uh, find the clip. Tony, by the way, if you're listening, I sent you the news. Um, all right, man. Yeah, yeah. Keep going. Anything else you want to add to price report? Uh, yeah, we'll just like quickly roll through some okay. of the macro yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah. like take a look at Bitcoin and we'll, we'll not dilly dally too long. We got long. Sev- over 70 people tuning in. Guys, like and share it. Nice. Okay, so we're looking at the Bitcoin chart here. Things have continued to go up since last week. We've kind of been on the positive, um, you know, at least my mindset for really the past months, as I've been telling you guys, the, the direction's up. The macro still says that there's juice to squeeze. Um, I'm actually starting to get concerned now about a sort of um, an interim little mini blow off um, that could happen. Um, I don't have any good levels here. I don't have any good way of, of determining that at, at this point. Um, we're kind of in some sort of, you could maybe call it uncharted territory. One thing that we are seeing is a little bit of rotation into ETH, um, right? ETH seems to be forming a bottom. Let's go to the weekly chart on this. Um, yes, I know these are pleb lines and, you know, just realize pleb lines are useful for certain things. In a lot of ways, pleb lines are referential, right? They give, they just give your eyes a referential place to understand like where price is and where it, like where it has been. Um, particularly, so for example, like this line right here, that is a horizontal area of significance. It, uh, there was a, an interim peak there. And it just seems that price has been coming to that spot uh, repeatedly over the past, oh, I guess that'd be seven years now. Um, so that's going to be like, that's a big spot of resistance to break, right? That's psychologically important. Um, it's also just a reference for your eyeballs. Okay, the other thing too is that we seem to have this like pretty um, pretty significant uptrend line here that, uh, that Ethereum bounced along the bottom here and now it's kind of moving to the upside. So um, it does look like there's going to be some rotation into Ethereum. Um, we could just take a look at the Bitcoin dominance as well. Can we? There we go. Sometimes the charts don't quite respond as quickly as I would like them. Uh, yeah, so Bitcoin dominance looks like it's kind of leveling off. It's starting to look a little bit like the volatility is falling off, right? So you kind of got this um, seesaw action happening here, but um, it seems like that's kind of getting compressed there. The volatility is getting volatility is getting compressed. So um, that could imply another big move coming up here. Um, one thing that I was looking at today is the combined Bitcoin Ethereum chart. Um, this is probably going to be a useful chart to look at in a lot of ways. I feel like the Bitcoin chart by itself, um, can be difficult to interpret. I do think that the general situation of liquidity and us dollars in the crypto system, um, is kind of, it, it often sloshes from one coin to another coin to shit coins. You know, it makes these sort of rotations, but the overall market cap of the total crypto like cryptocurrency market cap, um, seems to. And I've noticed this over the past, like just say two, three years, the total market cap chart typically seems to be a bit more stable. It seems to be typically a little bit more reliable, but not always. Sometimes the Bitcoin chart um, is just a cleaner chart to look at. It's a, it's an easier chart to interpret. Um, in this case, I think that the combined Bitcoin Ethereum chart and total are a little bit easier to interpret and look at because Bitcoin is kind of above a bunch of levels and I don't have any good ways of saying, you know, where I think the top would be. Um, which is why I'm going to have to try and correlate the macro situation um, to to see if I can make a, you know, a, a correlation and association there to what Bitcoin might be doing and when a top might be forming. Um, so right now, uh, basically, Bitcoin plus Ethereum market cap is just kind of trending up this channel right here, um, kind of bumping up along the top side of a few different things. So we've got the pleb lines, uh, and then we've also got the the purple lines here. Um, the purple lines are just a really good way of sort of measuring an upward channel and upward trend. Um, in almost all cases, it's so rare to just 
punch above these purple lines and then just keep going. Usually um, the top of these per shorter term purple lines and the blue lines um, price tends to establish itself between those and then, and then range to the upside, uh, at least in a trending market, right. in an uptrending market. So we've got the uh, reverse repos here. We've been talking about this forever. Still half a trillion dollars there. It seems to have slowed down a little bit, right. It seems to have um, uh, kind of be curling under here, right. It's, it's not going down as fast. And wouldn't you know, um, with that, the stock market has not been, um, you know, for the past week, it's kind of just been chopping sideways, really almost two weeks now. Yeah, two or three weeks now, the, the stock market has basically been kind of chopping sideways, put on some new all-time highs. Um, that's probably because the reverse repo, there's less money coming out of that. Um, we got some inflation numbers. Uh, I think it was actually not this week, but it was last week or maybe the week before. Um, yeah, the inflation numbers didn't do anything special, um, basically just trending sideways. Uh, we have now reached the sticky part of inflation, and they've talked about this for like a year or so. This is the sticky part of inflation. Okay, they got it down to 3.1% on the CPI, but getting it down to actually 2%, that's going to be hard. They're going to have a hard time doing that, and especially with the core inflation. Uh, the core inflation is at 4%. So um, yeah, the Fed, I mean, they talked recently about the conditions under which they might lower rates, which I think is even premature of them to have talked about that, but, um, but they did it. So uh, I guess they want the markets to know that they got their back. Um, okay, so now we've got the bonds. We're looking at bonds. Nothing special here has happened. Real yield curve is still inverted, but still trending sideways. Um, rates have slightly gone up in bonds, which means that the value of those bonds have slightly gone down. Um, these are the z-scores of all the different assets here. You'll notice bonds um, have kind of like slightly been going down lately. Um, again, the value of bonds is inversely correlated to the rate at which they're offered. We won't get into the reason for that uh, on this show today. Um, right now, you'll notice that crypto is actually, in terms of Z-scores, the overall crypto market cap is actually pretty high. Um, in fact, wouldn't you know it, we are exactly those two horizontal lines that I just dropped, that purple right there. In fact, maybe I can make this easier for you guys to see. Let's just remove everything. Crypto is in purple. I don't know why I chose purple. Just felt like the right color for crypto. So you'll notice that the Z scores on crypto here are at about the same level that they were in the 2019 miniature blow off top that happened after the uh, the 2017 bubble or peak. Um, so I mean, shit is getting close, guys. Like I, I, I'm not saying to take profit. I'm not saying to sell your bags or sell your hodl to sell your long term trading stack. I'm not saying to do that right now. But just, just know like. Statistically speaking, things are kind of, um, uh, they're out of trend here, right? They're, they are much higher than trend. Maybe this can continue for a while because the ETF still has a lot of money um, coming in from institutional. It's okay now, apparently. It's been, it's, it's sanctified for the average people to go and invest in Bitcoin and the ETF in the stock market. Um, so there's money coming in that way. There's still the reverse repos that are available. Um, and, uh, and it's an election cycle. So maybe that'll have something to do with it, but maybe not. It, it doesn't always. Uh, yeah, we don't need to look at oil, oil stable gold hasn't done anything. It's still flat. We don't need to look at that. And the dollar index is also basically stable. Um, we talked about this, uh, about expecting to get to that, uh, statistical level here, the, uh, the blue lines, the upper standard deviation. And we touched that, um, from here, that's a very wide range that things could go into. Uh, I'm not really convinced that, that the dollar's headed towards this direction anytime soon. Um, probably just more ranging. Uh, which is fine. I guess, you know, stability is, is probably better than crazy movements. Um, with that, uh, maybe we should look at Monero transactions too. I don't see why we wouldn't do that. Uh, Monero transactions is hovering slightly above 20K on average. Um, basically, that's where we've been for quite a long time. Uh, maybe we could look at a longer term chart. Let's go to the uh, the moving average. I like to look at the 90 day moving average just because it's so, right, so large. Um, da -da. yeah, so, uh, I mean, our best moving average approached, um, 30 K somewhere in the middle of 2022. Uh, and we're basically, I mean, we're, we're close, right? We're still, we're still averaging about 25,000 transactions, um, really since, uh, since December of last year. So this has moved up. This is good. Uh, we definitely like want to see this, um, kind of Monero transactions, uh, for whatever reason dropped off. Actually, that's very interesting that, um, that they were going down they dropped off. Um, last year in the first quarter. So anyways, things are kind of moving on the upside uh, in regards to that. Uh, Monero nodes still still hanging out around uh, just above 20,000 as well. Uh, so 20, one transaction per node, effectively. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. That's probably not. <laughs> that's not the interpretation on that chart. I'm um, just playing. Uh, I, I guess that's about it, guys. We don't really need to talk about anything else here. Uh, we looked at the volume. Yeah. So 
Any questions? Uh, let's check the YouTube in case anyone else got something they want to see here. Uh, no, I'm not seeing anything. Could have bought 14,000 of precious. <laughs> with X, of precious? <laughs> okay. All right, so that's all I got for you guys. Or am I am I all right, solo here? <laughs> no, no, right. no, 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 no. I'm just dealing with the the elements over here. Um, yeah. All right, we got. Oh, we're up to up to eighty people. Smash so I mean, as as you kind of said earlier, um, you you kind of you, you think there might there might be some more price discovery to go with regards to the response from the delisting. Uh, yeah, I, I guess I would have to say yes. Uh, I would obviously, I'd like to see price move to the upside. That would be a nice confirmation that this whole thing was basically artificially induced um, to hit the price. But who knows? They could just have rotated a lot of that into Qcoin. I, I wouldn't be surprised. I, I would kind of expect, let's just say 60-40, that Monero's direction for the next month is up 60-40. All right, that's pretty good. Do you think um, there's a point where it, it becomes more bullish as you see it go up and confirming that, you know, delisting is good. Uh, at what point mm. do we, do we reach that, that stage? Unfortunately, unfortunately, I just feel like the lines are drawn, socially speaking, the people that like Monero that want to be in Monero, they're here, right? We're, we're using it. Um, we do have new people like that. This whole thing has brought new people into the market, but I see that more of as it's a long-term kind of price impact. That's not a, I wouldn't look mm -hmm. to the new people coming into the market right now for short-term price action. Um, these are new people that are like, oh, wait a second. Wow, they actually delisted it. No shit. They must actually be scared of it, right? People like Monero earning at street cred, people being more interested in the project as a result. Um, this is going to be long-term price price um, support or price help, um, but I just short-term, I wouldn't expect it. Um, I'm not saying it's going to yeah, go yeah, down yeah. anymore. Just, you know, I don't want to... I don't want to I'm, I'm just those, wondering... Those being the you know eternal um, Monero maximalist, just just wondering if there's a point where you know I right? read so this this is bringing in new people. People have their eyes on Monero now. They're like, oh, this is this is interesting. They've the, the you know they're they're going after this coin specifically. Uh, they delisted it. I guess that means you know some people might be thinking that that means it's dead, right? But then they'll see it's and see it's still there. And maybe if they start to see it go up, there might be kind of this moment where people are like, oh, this is. This is really interesting. Uh, Monero is seems to be detethered and um, approaching its own honest value, right? That would be amazing. I I hope that happens. Um, that would be very yeah. powerful for sure. <laughs> like if we make so, it back uh, to 150, 160 in the coming weeks, I think that actually does. Um, that's a powerful message for sure. Right, and and how do you not talk about that at that point? That's uh, it will start to write its own story. <laughs> Um, I mean, I right. think uh, there's a certain group of crypto people that would fall silent if that happened. A group who shall not be named. They've been celebrating. Oh, what is it? We celebrated the delisting, oh. and then they celebrated the price crash. Who? Uh, who are you referring to? You're referring to BTC Ma people or Zcash? Yeah, I'm referring to the just the maximalists. Just referring okay. to the max, the ma the maxi community. Not yeah, all of them. Yeah, yeah. Some of them are like maximalish. You know, they're like Bitcoin and also kind of Monero. Um, but I've seen what, is, what know, has the Zcash community been saying, right? I think originally because they were part, they're they're not getting delisted, correct? They made that change to their address scheme. Oh, they created super that transparent addresses or something. Bold yeah. of you to assume that... that they have a community. <laughs> <laughs> I try to Oof. be. I try to be nice. Um, but yeah, is that actually a thing? So they're they're not being delisted. Uh, is that the case? Oh, actually, that's a good question. Let's, uh, let's pull that up. I, I no, they, I mean, they weren't announced. Um, they weren't announced by Binance to be you know, here. They're trading. Have they mm -hmm. kind of they kind of been affected in the same way, even though they're not getting delisted? Yeah, actually, is that let's, fair to let's say? take a look at that. <laughs> um, let's look at that right now. Uh, we're going to put that's just like... XMR. That's just salt in the wound there. <laughs> They're like, and you, you've made these concessions. Um, you've, you've tried to keep your coin on the exchange, and it's still tanking anyway. Okay, so um, Zcash is on the left scale here. They're the candles. Um, mm. 
And no. Well, okay, yeah, write it, write it first. All right. Let me pause before I say anything stupid. <laughs> um, okay, so their price was correlated with Monero, so Monero being orange on top, um, but that was January. Um, so then Monero kind of was making a nice move to the upside without Zcash going into mm -hmm. the delisting news, and then Monero crashed, but Zcash didn't really crash. They had a little bit of a bump down here. That was probably okay. related um, to the fear aspect of the privacy coins. Oh, Jesus. Right. Oh, my God. Look at this crap. Okay, and then look at them pumping. Zcash pumping while Monero is doing this. Yeah, that's that's not... Um, I really don't like that. That's that's scammy as fuck. Uh, you know, we haven't looked at the... Um, I haven't looked at the Zcash price relative to Monero for a long time. Um, so let's Zcash take a look at that. is on is on monitoring status in Binance right now from Gone by Fire. So do, monitoring. Oh. But yeah, they're just they're just monitoring them. I mean, so they're not going to get delisted, which is a, it and, seems uh, difficult yeah, there is, to believe that corporate coin is going to get delisted. Right, right, right. So like, we're we're Zcashers uh, celebrating the crash of Monero price from the delisting. I didn't. Uh, I didn't any of see any of them sure. doing that. Uh, my guess is, like, if, if I had to guess what they would say, it would be something like, um, well, this is what happens when you don't have um, a, a coordinated team to manage the development of your coin so that you can meet the regulatory requirements while remaining private enough. Um, like, they, they, they exactly, probably would say exactly. something like that. Like, exactly. This is what happens when you, when you don't care about, uh, when you don't care about your community and, and you don't care about being a responsible global player. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay so here's the xmr zcash chart right so xmr relative to zcash as it goes up monero is doing better than zcash and yes i mean we just continually put on gains um we talked about this like a couple years ago but yeah i mean this was special the whole bull market where monero was flat to zcash um even though monero was like crushing it in terms of real adoption and usage and uh yeah with the del with the delisting um over the past three weeks we've seen wow Monero lost 40% relative to Zcash as a result of this. Um, at least temporarily has lost 40% relative to Zcash. Oh, wow. That was a big hit. Big hit. Yeah. We were down 50%, 47% at one time. Um, but they're, they're yeah, going to be I watching mean, very cl very closely to see if we start to climb back. And as we do, they're going to be like, ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> I tend to think this is I mean, temporary. I really do. It's it's hard to think that this price hit is is really truly sustainable. Yeah. No. I mean, I think it it, it looks like we we've handled it quite well. I mean, fingers crossed. But there was strong buying that came in at a hundred and a hundred and ten dollars. Like it was massive buying there. Yeah, yeah hundred was a pretty like strong price floor. That might be the last time that Monero ever hits a hundred dollars. It could be. In fact, why don't we just like boldly make the claim? That is the last time. <laughs> Mineral will only have hundred dollars. It Tomorrow would it make goes down to sixty six. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Nighthawk. It was would saying. make a lot of. It would make a exactly. lot of sense, right? I mean, given the after that event, and it like it really it was a significant spike down and a bounce up. So yeah, I'd be quite surprised if we went down there again. Let's hope so. Fingers crossed. Monero's still a pretty good deal. Yeah, I know. Honestly, right? <laughs> Even at 120, what's it sitting at right now? 124? Monero's still a pretty solid price. It's a good deal. Yeah. I mean, it's priceless, you know? <laughs> it's got to be a meme. Um, all right, buddy, man. Thank you so much. Stick around Thanks, if you guys. can.